Manchester United were humbled away from home. A 2-0 defeat to Tottenham Hotspur and the United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Be sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new on your way in to support the United Twins, myself and Cappy. But let's get straight into this game, man, because... Oh boy, <laughs> after the Wolves performance, um, I was looking to see an improvement. Yes, we won the game, which at the time we saw as most important, or um, well, um, not all of us, but some of us at least. But there was a massive cause for concern when it came to the performance, having been left off the hook multiple times against the West Midland side. I thought in the first half of the game, it wasn't spectacular by any means, but off the eye, we managed to keep possession of the ball slightly better. And we're a little productive down the left-hand side with Alejandro Garnacho and Luke Shaw as the overlapping fullback. <clears throat> Apologies. Even Bruno Fernandes at times when he entered the half space threatened with that bonus being the pick of the bunch. Really, really nice piece of skill there. Unfortunately, Rashford was offside and he missed a header for that one. Sweet. So, overall... We carved out some decent chances, like the Rashford shot that was saved with Vicario's right hand, played in by Anthony. The key miss of the half, which was Bruno Fernandes' header, that was completely mistimed. Lovely switch of play from Mr. Blade Blade himself, or Bay Blade, Bay Blade, Bay Blade, Bay Blade. Nacho and Shaw combining, it is difficult, but you would have expected our captain to at least get the header on target. Andrew. Unfortunately, that wasn't meant to be. Now, before I touch on the disaster class, there was a bit of an uproar regarding our penalty shout in the first half where Garnacho's shot was blocked by Christian Romero's hand. I know it's slightly difficult to determine nowadays what is and isn't a handball, but definitely at the time, I was convinced it was the hand away from the body and all. It was from close range, but we've seen those given. Talk about the inconsistencies, that's another thing. Right. So, with that being said, I understand why many fans and players, including Bruno, who at the end had something to say about it, felt aggrieved about Michael Oliver's final decision. What did the 22s think, though? Was it a penalty? Let us know in the comments. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what happened at halftime in that dressing room, but it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. At all. And there were warning signs. Madison almost playing in song. Pedro Porro hitting the bar before this period. And even the eventual goal scorer, Papessar, forcing a save out of Andre Onana. But unfortunately, only three or four minutes into the second half, there was no chance of our new keeper saving this strike. The move starts after we lose possession with Alejandro Garnacho. Spurs originally worked their way over to the left side before Besuma and Papessar and Pedro Porro, who plays the eventual pass, combined to find the dangerous Dejan Kuluszewski. When it gets to that point, you notice that Luke Shaw is a little inverted with his positioning. Yeah. I think the back four as a whole were slow in reacting to the switch of play. Mm. Garnacho also seemed a little out of sorts, not exactly knowing where the winger is and that leaves Kuliszewski with acres of space to take a couple touches, deliver a ball across the face of goal, slight deflection and suddenly you see Pape Sar at the back post on hand to slap it into the back of the net. Poor goal to concede, so close after the restart. Cappy describes the first goal really well. However, I think the second goal we conceded was even more pitiful. Leading up to that point, you saw the best of this Spurs team. And it's almost amazing to see how managers can create this much change within a group that's receptive to the instructions they receive. Postacoglu and Roberto Di Zerbi over at Brighton are names that come to mind so far. Guys were knocking the ball about one, two touch football. Flicks and everything, when I say every, everything was working for this Spurs side. While we on the other hand just couldn't handle the rigours of another 45 minute half. It is quite concerning having seen the performances against Wolves and now the drop off in this game. 
we've got Forest mm. next to a coming off a exhilarating last minute victory against Sheffield United with Arsenal and Brighton close by. Some very difficult tests all round and we will have to improve quickly or I'm afraid there will be some rude awakenings for all of us. With those next three games in mind, how much points do we come away with? Let us know in the comments. Another thing I wanted to speak about quickly is the overall mentality of the squad. Sometimes I as a fan feel mentally tricked because when you see this team go for a successful period, there's hope of change and moving forward but those bad habits always seem to creep back in at the most opportune of times. Looking at Spurs and the game as a whole, focusing on our team, you notice bad body language, organisation and a lack of positive leadership. We had the energy zapped out of us and look, only those players will understand how they felt and why they reacted a certain way when the game changed. But it must improve. We've spoken in the past about some of these players not being able to get over that final hurdle. Some believe that we're at the stage once again with a promising first season. So now it's time to kick on and achieve bigger things. Yeah. I'm willing to provide more time for trial and error after reflecting as long as we can visually see and understand which direction this squad is heading in. Right now, there's a little bit of uncertainty. This 22's view segment is all about you. Rhyming. On the beat. But anyway, on Twitter, the YouTube community tab, we've asked you to have your say about the game. And the same will be said about news we're going to be covering in the next few United Twins episodes. So look out for that. CM22ENT on Twitter and the YouTube community tab. Subscribe if you're new. Without a further ado. Let's see some comments. Shout out to the man Chekushna over on Twitter. Put out the post. Send your opinions on the game under this tweet for a chance to be featured in the next United Twins video. Just trying something out for a second. The man Chekushna came through and said, A loss was imminent with our current form and play style, which I don't personally understand. So I came through, gave a little response, saying, Mr. Man Chekushna! What were your expectations going into the season regarding our style of play and what has gone wrong? And he replied, my expectation is top three and another trophy to show we can stay consistent and we did not have a fluke season. So given a more in general opinion regarding team achievements, as far as how we have started, I must admit, I just feel genuinely confused. And the Manchester Kushner right now is confused in regards to how Manchester United have started the season and that may be due to the playing style and the expectations he had on the way we would play in the way maybe we would transform our style of play going into this new campaign. Maybe the Manchester Kushner, if you see this, can expand a little more on that in the comments and especially all of the rest of the 22 seeing this. Give your thoughts on those comments. King Stash, shout out to you. Gave a very descriptive opinion on the game, saying it was very interesting. United were unable to finish their chances. Our ball retention was poor and there were moments you could see a clear disconnect between the defence, midfield and attack. Take the, that goal we conceded first. Our left side was completely exposed. Garnacho was not paying attention to Shaw's positioning. But once he noticed how far Shaw was from Kuliszewski, he began to trap back. You notice Shaw retreating instead of stepping up towards Kodoshevsky. He drops to the ground quickly. The cross goes in, the flex off Martinez and Saar scores. One of Mount and Bruno should have been on that side of the field. The gap between Garnacho and Shaw, the lack of communication and link up made our attacks ineffective on that side and was a weakness in our defence. Also, there was a clear lack of sharpness and chemistry in the attacking midfield. Our greatest attacking threat seems to be coming from our defenders. Unlike our attackers, defenders are more likely to hit the target. So he says a lot there about that first goal in particular, the game and the lack of connection right now and chemistry with some of the players in this side. And also attack, not firing at all cylinders a lot of people are kind of hoping when Rasmus Hoyland comes in rumored to be around the Arsenal game 
to be ready at least maybe coming off the bench in that game potentially but people are hoping when he comes in we might see a little more when it comes to our attacking output but overall i thought i don't know i i just feel like his execution when we're on the wings i don't think we uh choose the right crosses to put into the area the guys that are in the box their movement is not smart or acute enough to trick defenders and and find the open space we need to do better in that regard and of course having a, a traditional striker should help us a little more in regards to not just getting crosses into the area but also having somebody that understands how to move inside the box and trick defenders into finding that space and, and losing defenders overall and in regards to uh the lack of sharpness that's something that in these training sessions that they're doing today tomorrow and onwards towards the next game and the next game I just hope they're doing their utmost best to make sure that they're getting fitter, that they're understanding a bit Eesh. more what Eric Ten Hag wants from them. Eesh. So we see some swift improvements. Shout out to King Stash on that one. Shout out to Darius on Twitter. See, so normally you see teams try and stretch the back four. At half time, Spurs move the full back and Madison to stretch our midfield one. And just focusing on that midfield one comment, Casemiro. The start of the season has been very isolated in that position. You can see the formation that we play. It doesn't exactly help that. And well documented on this channel, we've spoken about our midfield issues, uh, a lack of control in that area, but also defensive stability. Yeah. And it's clear Eric Ten Hag will have to either change up something or the team just need to adapt a little better in order to you know, provide Casemiro with a bit of protection whether it is something to do with the way they keep possession of the ball or, or any other things, maybe Darius can give us some great insight in the comments because he is a great football man within himself. And I would recommend going over to his channel and watching the videos that he does breaking down some of the topics and the issues regarding Manchester United right now. Shout out to Paxton in the cut, regular settings. Oh. So the <laughs> sentence that sums us up at the moment, we need to start Anthony Martial. I'm not watching the next game if Rashford is a striker. Why are you laughing? I'm being serious. It's, it's quite a funny comment because, you know, I've gone on record. I'm sure kathy has gone on record as well and said, listen, I'm not talking about Anthony Martial anymore until he can prove to us that he can spend a whole season being fully fit. And there are rumours of him potentially leaving still in this transfer window so we don't know what's going to happen to him i believe he came on a little bit in the spurs game so we'll see how eric tenard potentially implements him into the squad but i'm not putting any reliance on anthony martial to stay fit in order to transform our side and and be that focal point because when we have relied on him in the past look what's happened we have evidence now and a whole load of it this is not particularly a question about manchester united or anything else but it's from jonah on twitter said thinking about joining this content game thoughts so i wanted to to give my opinion basically say yeah go at it attack it because this is a great time period i think in terms of empowering each other to be more to do more as a football fan especially in the media landscape we've seen uh, people like uh, robbie from aftv dr sports now flex kg and the crew at united view the united stand and many other fan channels really propel what it means to be a fan in this space to the point where they are regularly appearing on sky sports all of these mainstream media platforms so as long as you are passionate about what you do, you love it and you want to be unique, you want to bring this space forward and, and continue to progress, continue to improve as the weeks, the months, the years go by, then attack whatever you want to do, especially when it comes to making content. And let us know in the comments what your channel is, if you have made one already. So everybody over here, all the 22s can go and support it too.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this United Twins episode. Let us know what you thought about the 22's view segment. Had a lot of fun filming it and interacting with a load of your comments. So please be sure, week in, week out, once we put out the tweet and also the post on the YouTube community tab, interact for a chance to feature in these episodes. And also in the comment section of these videos, stir up some conversation also. As there may be things we've missed out on and you want to bring to our attention, we will be there in the comments. We will be there. Yeah. Ladies and gents, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really helps to propel us twins forward so we can do more for you. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lots in a bit.